Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for being here this morning. I'm Captain Tom Stouffer, the Public Information Officer for the Auburn Police Division. Before we begin this morning, this press conference, I ask that you join me in a moment of silence in memory of our victim here this morning, Miss Lauren Burke. Thank you. To all of our media friends here today, I know it's been a long few days for you as it has been for us. We appreciate the kindness and respect that you have displayed to date, and we ask for your continued patience and understanding as we move ahead in this case. At this time, I introduce to you our Chief of Police, Frank DeGraffenried. Again, thank you for being here this morning. We're here this morning with both grief for Lauren and her family's loss and relief that we're gonna be able to announce some developments in the case that um, make Auburn, Lee County, State of Alabama a safer place. I wanna recognize uh, a fine group of individuals that uh, formed a task force for us on this case and apologize for reading but I want to make sure I don't leave anybody out. We have representatives from each of these agencies here representing the men and women that served so well on this task force. From the Federal Bureau of Investigation, from the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, from the U.S. Marshal's Office, from the Alabama Bureau of Investigation, from the Alabama Department of Forensic Sciences, from the Alabama State Fire Marshal's Office, the Lee County District Attorney's Office, the Lee County Sheriff's Office, the Lee County Coroner's Office, the Opelika Police Department, the Auburn University Public Safety and Security Division. You notice that the numbers grew on this task force and the names we've added a couple of different agencies. And from the initial the morning after Lauren's death, we discussed this with the District Attorney Nick Abbott, and Nick suggested the task force. Jay Jones, the sheriff, was right there with us. He had already called and offered his assistance. And before we hung up the phone with these agencies that we contacted, they had people on the way. So we can't express enough appreciation to those members that served on the task force to all the men and women of this division that served countless hours protecting, safeguarding, and reassuring parents and students of their safety. I also want to give a special thanks to Chief Brian McGar, Phoenix City Police Department, and the efforts of their officers, and Detective Hatcher of the Columbus Police Department for his efforts in helping bring some closure to this case. As Captain Stouffer advised, we're here because Lauren Burke is not. That's the only reason. It's a sad reason. And I can't say enough, I'm a father myself and a grandfather, how much we grieve with the family. And thank you for families of these officers for sharing them with us and allowing us to do this job. This time, I'm gonna turn it open over to Chief Dawson and uh, let him discuss a few facts of the case. First of all, let me begin by saying this morning as I have every one of these press conferences, my heart, my, my prayers, my thoughts go out to the Burke family this morning who face a, such a great tragedy. And I want them to know and my thoughts and prayers are with them. Second, I'd like to thank my boss, Chief DeGraffney, for his leadership and guidance through this entire investigation. I'd also like to thank the Auburn community and the support we've received from the citizens of Auburn. They've understood what we were going through and why we were not releasing much information, and they understood the importance of that, and I thank their, them for their patience, because that is who we serve. Today, though, we are pleased to announce that warrants for capital murder, capital murder in the during a kidnapping, capital murder during a robbery, and capital murder during an attempted rape. All three warrants were signed this morning 
on an individual by the name of Courtney Laurel Lockhart from Smith, Alabama. His age is 23 years old. He was taken into custody yesterday uh, by the Phoenix City Police Department. I believe their motor division was responsible for the actual apprehension. We begin this case, as you all know, Tuesday night. We did not release much information because we were, frankly, we were on the trail of this individual. We had identified him by picture, a photo. We knew the, what the person looked like we were looking for. By the time, we had not uh, been able to find out his true identity. However, uh, he was apprehended uh, during a traffic stop, is my understanding, in Phoenix City. We immediately sent investigators over and it all came together late yesterday afternoon. At this time, we're going to turn it back over to Captain Stouffer, and he will have a few people he's going to introduce to speak to you today, and I will be back to answer any questions that you may have today regarding this case. Thank you, Chief Dawson. At this time, I have several individuals that would like to make a brief comment. If you would, please do not ask questions at this time. There will be ample time at the end of this uh, press uh, conference to ask questions. At this time, Mr. Jesse Seeroyer, U.S. Marshal's Office. Good morning. On behalf of the United States Marshal Service for the Middle District of Alabama, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to serve on this task force along with members from my office. And from the Northern District of Alabama, we have Marshal Marty Keeley, who's present here today. We also have Commander Michael Richards, who's uh, the commander of the Gulf Coast Regional Fugitive Task Force of the United States Marshal Service, and several members of my office. Now, bear in mind, this is a task force. This, is, this case would not have been possible had it not been for every man and woman that's represented here this morning. And we're very grateful to have been given the opportunity to come and, and bring this case to a closure. I offer my uh, condolence to the family, and I know how hard it is to lose a family member, to lose someone to a tragic like this. It's, and, and all these men and women in the room this morning from the uh, task force represent families. We care. But it's our job and our duty to do what's necessary to bring these type of cases to a closure. And on behalf of the United States Marshal Service, we're very grateful to have been asked to be a part of this task force. We live in the communities, we work in the communities, and we want to keep the communities safe. So on behalf of the United States Marshal Service, I say congratulations to the Auburn Police Department for bringing this case to a closure. And I'm very grateful for the con contribution from the United States Marshal Service and the members of our agency that contribute to, to help. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. At this time, the Honorable Nick Abbott, Lee County District Attorney. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, each one of you, for being here, and thank you for your interest and your coverage in this case. Uh, a, number, a number of you have called me for comment, and please recognize that as a prosecutor, we have ethical issues that we can't make comments that could potentially impact on a future trial. Uh, this morning, members of the Auburn Police Department came to my office. We met with Circuit Judge Jacob Walker, and the three warrants were issued after a recitation of probable cause to Judge Walker. Uh, at the next step will be a 48, 72-hour hearing for the defendant when we can get him back to Lee County, uh, probably Monday. Uh, the next step after that, uh, we have a grand jury May 5th. This case will be presented to the grand jury that convenes on May 5th. Uh, the trial could probably take up to a year from now. So, capital cases do not move speedily through the system. As you do this news conference today, please do not ask questions about evidentiary issues. I know you want to know. Uh, I know the public wants to know, but again, there are ethical problems with prosecution and answering evidentiary issues. And again, I thank each of you for being here. I uh, appreciate your consideration uh, in dealing with us in this situation and, uh, and not badgering Tommy Dawson as he came in and told you that he couldn't make comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. At this time, the Sheriff of Lee County, Jay Jones.
Our primary concern, of course, as everyone knows, is uh, to Lauren Burke's family, uh, as I'm sure everyone understands. But one thing I would like to comment on is the issue involving the task force. Their dedication has been total. The resolve has been absolute. And there has been a complete and relentless search for the truth. And I think when the appropriate time comes for the presentation of what has been gleaned from the investigation, that not only will it show that an individual has been charged, but that the right person has been charged. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And now Colonel Chris Murphy, Director of the Alabama Department of Public Safety. Thank you. On behalf of Governor Bob Riley and the state of Alabama, we are very pleased to have participated, uh, not only with the troopers, but uh, particularly the Alabama Bureau of Investigation. But I, too, just want to say that uh, the commendation to the uh, city of Auburn, the university, uh, the police department, to bring this task force together under uh, uh, Mr. Abbott's direction. Um, when you have a tragedy like this, any loss of life is tragic. But when it's a young student, um, it hits everybody home. I have a student here at the university. Um, it just exacerbates the, the issue. And that time is not when you start handing out business cards and introducing yourself. The people in this task force knew each other and they worked hard together and they worked dedicated together. And I just want to commend all of those who put together uh, this kind of task force to have these kind of results in less than a week. But thank you for your attention and thank you for your respect for the family. Thank you, sir. And at this time, Melvin Owens, Director of the Auburn University Public Safety and Security Division. Good morning. We'll simply on behalf of Auburn University I'd like to uh, express again the condolences to the Burke family for the loss of a vibrant young lady. I'd like to express appreciation to Chief DeGraffin Reed and the Auburn Police Department and the task force that was assembled. Uh, what a wonderful way to in this day show that there are modern day heroes, uh, heroes that sometimes go without recognition or notoriety but they work together seamlessly for a common resolution. <clears throat> Auburn University is better served by a group of people who look beyond themselves and seek for the common good. We say thank you for all that you've done, and we hope, we're hopeful that this will restore help and hope to Auburn University. Thank you, sir, and at this time, I'd like to turn it back over to our Assistant Chief of Police. Thank you again, Captain. Uh, one final thank you to Governor Bob Riley's office who contributed $10,000, the $10,000 reward, and also to all the private citizens and businesses out there who called us contributing to that reward also. Again, once again, the city leaders here at the city of Auburn were very supportive and all, as well as our community. And uh, at this time, I'll take your questions. Tommy, did he confess? Uh, Brian, I don't want to say whether he confessed or not, because please try to understand. I know you've heard this from me so much, but this is a capital murder case. It involves the death penalty. We have the right individual in, in jail. I'm 100% sure of that. You can take that for what it's worth. But I'll tell you this, with a capital murder charge, I owe it to that family, I owe it to this community, and I owe it to the Auburn University students over on that campus to do everything I possibly can to ensure that this trial is done fair to everyone involved and that the outcome is where it, what it needs to be with a guilty verdict. Having said that, you all know, having, you're all experienced reporters, and you know what a capital case is, and Mr. Abbott explained that. Our, our job is not done at this point. We have him in jail, you're right, we have a lot of evidence on him, but our job is not complete. Our job will not be complete until we have a verdict <coughs> in this trial that will come. Did I find it found in Mark Burke's car connection to Lauren Burke? Again, I, that's involved evidence, and I'm not going to get I will tell you this, we have a lot of evidence in this case a large amount of evidence and I'm not going to get into the specifics of the evidence simply because like I said we have a long process ahead of us and we're still working gathering evidence. Can you at least say something about this photo that helped identify him? You didn't have his name but you had his image. Can you tell us where that came from? We had a photograph that we had obtained uh, and I don't want to say where we got it but it, it, it we got it in a situation that we were pop, we felt like this was going to be the individual responsible for the murder of Ms. Burke and through a lot of technology, we even had assistance from NASA in enhancing the photograph. 
we left no stone unturned in this case. And through the technology out there today, uh, we were able to gain a lot from the photo and we were able to, through some other means, we were able to track this individual steps, pretty much had his footprints of where he was going and what he was doing at the time. And we were in the process of trying to catch up with him to uh, apprehend him. Did they know each other? Did the victim and this suspect? No, sir. I don't see any indications they knew each other. How about a prior record? I'm not, I don't have that information available to me today about a prior record, no, sir. Do you believe robbery was the motive? Um, I really don't want to get into what the motive was. I'd rather that, save that for the trial, for Mr. Abbott to cover that in his, when he prosecutes this individual. Can you say anything about whether she was randomly targeted and chosen or whether he'd been following her for a while? Uh, at this point, I'm not going to say whether it was a random deal or where he had been targeting her. Uh, I don't know that he tar I won't, I, won't, I don't believe he targeted her for that long if he targeted her at all. How do you how do you justify telling parents all week that their kids were not in immediate danger when this man was on the run? Because I we knew pretty much where this man the area this man was in it was not the Auburn University campus, and also I can justify that by the amount of police officers I had on that campus. And I can assure you, as you look around this room, a lot of these officers here have uh, children on that campus. And if there had been any danger at all, I promise you, it would have been known, I would have made it known to the public. There's always danger in the world we live in today, unfortunately. I, it's a danger when I walk out of this building today, always. But there was no more uh, amount of danger over there this week than any other week. And a matter of fact, you were probably safer over there this week than any other time because of the amount of officers Chief DeGraffney assigned to that post over there, uh, both marked and unmarked. I'm not sure the exact time we got this photograph and began uh, doing it, but it was early on in the investigation. Same day? Same day. Well, they happened Tuesday night, so it's probably been Wednesday. Chief, will the reward be paid out? No, sir. Uh, this case was done by police officers, and as you well know, we don't uh, accept rewards. As Where did the suspect first encounter the victim? Uh, really, that's something I don't need to get into today. And I, I, I know you guys have a tough job, and your, your job is to put it out to the public, but I think you will understand and the public will understand that that's just something. We, we have to save some of this stuff and, and as far as getting into evidence and specifics of the case. I just really can't do it until we – well, I promise you, if you cover the trial, you'll get every bit of it. Is he currently under suicide warrant? Not to my knowledge, he's not. You've never been able to track him. I'm sorry. Was he using your – Credit cards? Is that, is that how you were able to track him? Tell parents <coughs> nobody was in danger on Auburn University's campus because you knew he was nowhere near the campus. Thank you, Liz. That's a good question, but I really would rather that come out at, a, at the hearings. How about the circumstances surrounding his actual arrest? What I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. The circumstances surrounding his actual arrest. What was leading up to that? That you all were able to close in, catch him, and connect him to this case. My understanding, he was stopped by the Chief McGar's department on a traffic stop, and. Uh, Apprehended over there at that point, they saw some things and called us, and uh, and everything fell into place at that point. Was it just coincidence, or did they have a vehicle people were looking out for? I, I, they didn't have a lookout from us, no, ma'am. It was a lucky break, basically. I wouldn't call it a lucky break. <coughs> I called it a blessing from God, one thing, and then I would call it a uh, good police work all the way around. Good police work from this task force and good police work from those patrol officers made this stop. Do you believe we acted Yes, ma'am, I do. Sir, can you say whether or not uh, the initial contact occurred on campus or off campus? Uh, I'm not going to release that today. Again, it will come out in the hearings. Do you anticipate any additional arrests? No, ma'am. No, sir. Sorry about that, Brian. Did he have a particular connection to Auburn, whether it be a graduate or friends here or anything like that? He was from Smith, Alabama. I don't know of any connection that he had to, the Auburn, to Auburn at all, or Auburn University or the city of Auburn. Can you give us any sort of a, a more information on the timeline um, of the shooting as far as where she was shot? Was she shot on the road and jumped there? Or as, you, as we stated earlier, she was, uh, we first uh, found Mrs. Burke out on uh, Alabama 147 on North College Street. <coughs> got the call at 9.08. I believe it was 9.27. We got the call of the vehicle on fire. So that's pretty much the timeline I want to give out today again. And I, and I apologize for having to say this so much in this case, but I cannot try this case in the media. 
this case must be done in the courtroom where Mr. Adler can do his job and all the work that these officers have put in this case will not be in vain. Please try to understand. I'm going to take just a couple more questions and we're going to wrap it up. How did Shirley tell Lauren's family that you have her killer that was? I called him, yet, called her father late yesterday when I knew what, that we had our person in custody. It felt wonderful to tell him, but I'll tell you this, Elizabeth, the highlight of my day yesterday was putting this individual in jail, getting him off the streets where my family and your families live. But the highlight of Mr. Burke's day was seeing his daughter and knowing she looked well. So that that's, that puts it in perspective. Thank you for your How for your. Mr. Burke is very happy and very pleased with the work of these these agencies, and he's been very very supportive and. I've only known him since Tuesday night, but Mr. Burke is one of the finest individuals I've ever met. And I'll leave with this again. I, my heart and my prayers go out to their family. And I want to thank my community here in the city of Auburn and the Auburn University and the leaders over there, the president, for their support in this matter. They were very supportive. The city of Auburn, all the departments in the city of Auburn support us. And I just can't say enough about how proud I am to live in this community, and I thank you for your uh, reporting this. Thank you, Chief Dawson. And now uh, a final closing comment from Chief DeGraffenried, and I would ask uh, kindly that you not ask Chief DeGraffenried any questions. This is a closing comment. Thank you. Again, we know we frustrate media sometimes and, and the public's need to know that information to feel safe and secure. What we had to do is try to reassure everyone, both the university and the city, that things were under control, that we had our, our reasons for doing so. Chief Dawson has uh, been uh, hammered quite a bit for his uh, lack of commentation on some uh, things as far as evidence and what the investigation is doing. But I think he spoke quite well as to the reason that we do that. Our main goal is to bring this person to justice. Our main goal is to see that this person doesn't slip through a loophole somewhere in the legal system. Our main goal is not to provide, show my hand too soon in the deal to create further problems for those task force members that were working day and night to accomplish the goal to put this person behind bars and make our streets safer. We've accomplished that goal, and as he said, we would appreciate uh, not digging up too much stuff or reporting too much stuff that may later cause problems in the trial. You know, that stuff will come forth. You will realize the magnitude of this investigation and the magnitude of the evidence when the time comes when it is presented at trial. So we thank you. We want to thank the citizens of Auburn, the parents of the Auburn University students. Thousands have called us and the uh, support of the university during this time because it's really tough with the atmosphere around the campuses and around the country at this time for universities to to work so closely and so well with you and they have done a great job with us and i again reiterate to the city leaders in the community who fed us and took care of us and supported us through this uh, just thank you and the final thought is like I said at the beginning, we're here because Lauren Burke is not. And that's the only reason we're here. And again, we share that grief with the family. It's our loss also. Thank y'all for coming. And uh, again, it's with grief and relief that I leave y'all today. Thank you, Chief DeGraffenried. A final thanks to the media. You have all been absolutely superb this weekend. Uh, been most gracious, been most understanding. Uh, throughout the no comments, and we appreciate you so much for that. Uh, we do not plan at this time any more news conferences from the police uh, division. A press release has been prepared, and it'll be available from Miss Cheryl at the back of the room. Attached to that will be a photograph of Mr. Lockhart, and that concludes this briefing. Thank you. <laughs>